How's it going, y'all? Nick Nax here with some more quick facts on how to service your Anycubic M3 Max. Today, we're gonna be talking about your FEP sheet. What is it, how to replace it, and why you should replace it regularly. So this here is your FEP sheet. It's this actually clear film that's at the bottom of the vat. It makes a pretty cool noise when you tap on it because it's at very high tension. Every time that your build plate goes down into it, comes back out and prints a new layer, that new layer is gonna be stuck to the bottom of your FEP sheet and it's going to pull on the FEP sheet slightly and then pull away uh, at some point, hopefully, if you do everything right. So if you don't replace your FEP sheet for a while, eventually you're gonna start noticing some issues. It may result in some prints being stuck to the bottom of your vat, and usually this is caused by wear on your FEP sheet or a uh, improperly lubed FEP sheet. Just due to this extra friction, that kind of builds up on the surface over time. The other thing that can happen is that there can be folds in the FEP sheet. Often I found that if I'm printing a large flat area, especially several back to back, without adjusting and cleaning the FEP sheet, it will eventually create these little creases in the FEP sheet that are then reflected in the print. And I'll show some examples of that here on the screen. Now, we don't wanna just start unscrewing them one by one because these are the screws that actually provide tension to the FEP sheet. So if we remove them one by one, we're gonna have some uneven tension. It's not as big of a deal while we're removing it, but we wanna keep this in mind for later once we are putting the new FEP sheet in. So I'm gonna leave these edges and the very middles for last, and I'll remove some of these less important screws first. And you see, I'll skip this corner here because this corner has a lot of tension on it. So I want to leave it for later. And I'll do the same with the middle one here just to maintain a somewhat even tension around the perimeter. So as you can see, I've removed every other screw and kept these middle screws that are holding most of the tension of the FEP sheet, as you can see, still nice and tense. I'll continue with that same logic and I will slowly remove out some of these other middle guys and then I'll go for the corners, going around and loosening them over time. Now that we have all of our tension screws unscrewed, we can pop out this FEP sheet holder layer. What we have left are two metal clamps with the FEP sheet in the center of it. The FEP sheet is somewhat loose at this stage. And if we flip it over, you'll see more screws, this time of a slightly smaller caliber. These screws are what clamp the FEP sheet in place. We can really see a bit more of the wear and tear that has been done to this FEP sheet at this stage now that all the tension has been released. So I'll go ahead and place that down and we can start unscrewing it. Now, something worth noting here before we go ahead and remove our plate and our old FEP sheet, which side is facing up? This is more important for certain FEP sheets, specifically the FEP sheet from any cubic that comes with your printer. There is one side that is slightly textured and one slide that is a bit more glossy. You want the textured side facing up. So the same side where we just removed these small screws, that is your up because remember that the vat would then go on top like this. So you want the textured side on the same side as your small screws. So just keep that in mind, it's worth noting. I'm gonna go ahead and remove 
our top layer and remove our old FEP sheet. Now that that has been taken care of, I'll go ahead and pop out our new FEP sheet. I have here some FEP sheets that I bought on Amazon by Koyo it, they are 380 by 260 millimeters, so definitely large enough for our needs. You can get many different sizes and thicknesses. This one is 0.127 millimeters thick, and they have done me well. If you are not in a time crunch, I'd say just go ahead and order your FEP sheets straight from Anycubic. I'll put a link to these in the description as well as the Anycubic branded ones. So I'll go ahead and remove our FEP sheets from the tube. And we have four now, because I think I've already used one. And you can see on this FEP sheet that we are looking at a lot of blue, but that's okay. What these actually are are protective film layers on both sides of your FEP sheet. Every FEP sheet is going to have these layers, so make sure to peel off your film layers. And it might be confusing, but this clear film layer is not our FEP sheet. Our FEP sheet is actually still here, attached to the blue, so we'll place it down on top, and I'll peel off the blue now. There is no textured side. That being said though, I'm going to assume that the side that had blue on it is the top and the side with the clear film is the bottom. Probably not as big of a deal with this sheet as it would be for the Anycubic branded sheet, which again, the textured side is the top. And I've placed it where I want it. Make sure there's plenty of overhang on all sides. We'll place our top panel back over and we will start screwing back in our tiny screws. So something to keep in mind with these smaller screws as we are screwing this in and building tension on our screen, we want to make sure that the screen below is at tension. We don't want it to be super loose or have a bunch of extra material here in the center. What we wanna do is actually do the corners first, build that tension over time. So I'll pick a corner and I'll screw in here. As you screw, it should sort of puncture on its own. We'll do opposite corners to build that tension. I'll pull the FEP sheet tight, and then I'll do this corner here. So now we've built some tension, and I'll do the same on these corners. Pull tight and screw, and I will do the same up here in this corner. So now that we've gotten our corners, We've built some tension in here. I'll go ahead and grab these corners as well, just to really make sure we have that tension. And we shouldn't have to do much more pulling. At this point, the FEP sheet in the center should be pretty tight. So we have all of our corners nice and tight. We're gonna go ahead and start doing some of these middles, okay? So I'll grab these two middle ones, Well, do we have our middles? We can go ahead and just go around one by one and get the rest of the screws screwed in. And then we'll do one final pass to make sure all the screws are super tight and good to go. So now that all the small screws have been screwed in around the perimeter, I'm gonna go ahead and take my small Allen wrench and do one final check just to make sure these are nice and tight. So we now have our FEP sheet screwed in between these metal clamps. Now, you can tell it's not at full tension yet, but that's okay. It's okay to have a little bit of give, especially because it'll build that tension once we stick it into the vat. So let's go ahead and take our vat here. We're gonna flip it upside down. And we're gonna take our FEP sheet and we're gonna flip that so that the small screws are facing downwards now and we have access to these larger screw holes. We're gonna want 
to make sure we are doing this in a logical pattern because if we just go ahead and start screwing each one of these in at full tension, we are going to put a lot of stress on this metal bracket and we don't want any bending to occur to the bracket itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go one by one and only start each one. It might be a bit difficult to really push each screw through. So you're gonna have to break through the FEP sheet and we're just gonna get each one of these started. So I'm not screwing in all the way at all. I'm barely building tension on that corner. I'm just getting it so that the screw is set into the hole and then I will worry about the rest later. Now that all these corners are set, I'll go ahead and set the centers and then I'll grab these centers on either side here. And now I'll go ahead and grab the centers of these. So we have three empty holes on each quadrant. So I'll go ahead and grab the centers of these. Yeah, we are building that tension now, which is awesome. So let's finish this off and grab the remaining screw holes. Again, not screwing in all the way, just screwing in so that the um, screw head meets the metal, and that's it. We've now gone through and built tension around the whole FEP sheet. We can start sinking these in. Now, I don't wanna sink them in all the way just yet. I wanna build tension over time, so we're gonna sink this one in about halfway. And then last but not least, these final screws. And we'll just get everything screwed in nice and tight. And we'll be done. So now all of our screws are fully screwed in. The next thing to take care of is this layer that's sort of sticking out the sides. I'll take my X-Acto blade right down around the edge here. Go ahead and start cutting right around this outer rim. It's okay if your blade touches the black plastic, that is fine. You just wanna slice along that outer rim and our plastic is gone. So now we are left with our vat, with our FEP sheet, with uh, plenty of tension and we should be good to go. So now that we have our new FEP sheet installed, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the bottom of it. This is the side that's gonna be facing the screen and we wanna make sure that it is perfectly clean so as to not dirty our screen in the process. So I'm gonna spray some isopropyl alcohol and I have a fresh cloth here that I'll go ahead and use to just wipe this guy down. And it's uh, just as easy as sticking the vat back on and then this is where I'll go ahead and clean the inside. So now our FEP sheet is nice and clean, but before we screw on our screws to the edges here, there's one more step. So what I have here is some uh, just bounce fragrance-free static sheets, basically. These are the same kind of sheets you put in your dryer to make sure your clothes don't grab static, but it also works perfect for this. So I'll just place one between the FEP sheet and the screen, and you can see it's already kind of sticking to the sheet before I even place it down there. And that's it clinging to that electricity, those electrons. So um, by doing this, we're gonna be able to pull off some of that static away from our FEP sheet. If you're into 3D printing, especially with this printer, I highly recommend buying a box of these. Uh, they are really useful. You'll notice that every time I do it, there's just a little bit less static. And I'll probably do it one more time, but this is probably overkill. Usually two to three times will do the trick. While this is pulling away static for our last go, I'm actually gonna use some of this lubricant. This is a three-in-one PTFE lubricant that is really good for lubricating the bottom of your FEP sheet. So this is another trick. If you are having failed prints, 
prints getting stuck to your FEP sheet, it might just be that you need to go ahead and lubricate it. So I recommend doing this every time you clean or replace your FEP sheet. You take a little bit of lubricant and just kind of spray it on. And then we'll take a napkin or a paper towel and we'll just sort of spread it around. You don't want to use the paper towel to clean it off. You just want to spread it so that it's not bubbled up in little bits. I usually do this while there's still one more dryer sheet in there because the dryer sheet helps grab any of the last static that might be caused by wiping the screen with the napkin. I'll go ahead and remove this final dryer sheet and screw on our final pegs. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful and somewhat entertaining. I'm going to be posting more videos about maintenance on this 3D printer, but also some cool 3D printing projects that I have coming up that I would love to share with you guys. So make sure to get subscribed and comment down below on what you wanna see next. I'll also make sure to put in the description where you can buy some of these items that are very useful for replacing your FEP sheet and also just general printer maintenance, such as this three-in-one PTFE lubricant, some dryer sheets, and FEP sheet replacement parts, either from a third party like these or from Anycubic themselves. But thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.